I cannot believe I'm doing this again. Hey everyone, my name is Melody and thank you for clicking on this video. So due to the success of the first video, um, I got a lot of requests to do a part two where I react to more Jack Eichel trade offers. And it's like, haven't I suffered enough just being a Sabres fan? Like, I don't want to keep envisioning the best player the Sabres have had since Gilbert Perrault in other teams' uniforms. It makes me sad. So again, I asked you to send me in your best Jack Eichel trade offers, and I said this time, actually, try. And I got a lot of responses. I got almost 500 responses compared to last time where I didn't even get 200, so. So as much as I don't want to keep thinking about it, um, I decided to do a part two because uh, over the past few days, Jack Eichel's name was trending on Twitter, and it was because a group of other team's fans were coming up with more ideas on what they thought it would cost to get Jack. I think it came from a bunch of Rangers fans that made it trend. And then, you know, Sabres Twitter jumped in and was like, you guys aren't even close. Um, and then more fans were jumping in. It was a fun day. <laughs> There were, there were some pretty interesting ones, I'll say, but... So, I thought I'd give you guys a second chance. But before we get into any of the trade offers, we need to have a chat. So, last time I did this video, I got hit with a ton of hate comments. Um, a lot of people thinking that I'm overvaluing Jack and, and all this stuff. Let's make one thing very clear. I am remarkably objective when it comes to the Buffalo Sabres. Like, have you heard the songs I've written about them? <laughs> but a lot of people were calling me some not nice names. First of all, if you don't agree with my opinion, totally fine. It's called a discussion. And even when I posted kind of what I thought my idea for what a, a fair Jack Eichel trade would be, um, I got a lot of people still saying stuff like I'm crazy or I'm dreaming or I'm smoking something potent. You want to see dreaming? You want to see smoking something potent? I'll, I'll show you. So this is an article from WGR 550. It's the sports talk radio station here in Buffalo. Um, and it was written by one of the hosts. Uh, his name is Joe DiBiase. And it's titled, So You Want to Trade for Jack Eichel? Good luck with that. <laughs> Now Joe, like me and you know all other Sabres fans, um, says that the idea of trading Jack Eichel is silly, but for the sake of the argument, he gives his own thoughts on what he thinks it might cost. You think I'm crazy, you'll love him. From Colorado, Nathan McKinnon and Tyson Jost. Why? Because Nathan McKinnon's a year older and has three years left on his contract, Jack has six, so you add Jost. From Carolina, Sebastian Ajo and Andrei Sveshnikov. Mm -hmm. From Dallas, Tyler Sagan and Miro Heiskanen. You hear that, Dallas fans? The gap between Jack Eichel and Tyler Sagan is Miro Heiskanen. From Edmonton, Connor McDavid. From New Jersey, Jack Hughes and Nico Heischer. And two firsts. And yes, he does mean the seventh overall pick in this year's draft. <laughs> From the Rangers, ooh, you Rangers fans will love this one. Mika Zibanejad, Capo Caco, and two firsts for Jack. From Toronto, ready? Austin Matthews and Rasmus Sandin. You see that, Leafs fans? You think Austin Matthews is so much better than Jack Eichel? Nope. Jack costs less and is under contract for two years longer, so you add in Sandin. <laughs> Just what we need, another Rasmus. From Vancouver, Elias Pettersson and Brock Besser for Jack Eichel. Yeah, so all you Canucks fans from my last video who were so sure that Pettersson is better than Jack, nope. Add in Brock Besser. Suddenly I'm not sounding so crazy, am I? <laughs> Literally all I'm asking for is like a second line forward, second pairing defenseman, two prospects, and two picks. Like, it's not that bad. If you're forcing me to trade Jack, the only kind of return that really makes any kind of sense to me is like an Eric Lindros type of return. Get a bunch of pieces that, you know, aren't as good as Jack, but will fill out the roster more in his absence. I understand that it sounds like a lot because it is a lot, but when you're trading for one of the best players in the league, you're not supposed to feel good about everything you have to give up. It's supposed to hurt. You can't just offer up some roster players that you don't even want and then some prospects that you don't even know will have an impact in the NHL, you know what I mean? If you don't want them, what makes you think the Sabres are gonna want them? Don't answer that. All right, so a lot of people made some jokes last time. Let's see how many people took it seriously this time. Not many. <laughs> Ooh, let's start, with, let's start with my favorite one here. To Buffalo, Jack Eichel. From Buffalo, Jack Eichel. It's beautiful. David Ayers assigned David Ayers stick and the rights to Breast Bonanza for Jack Eichel. <laughs> Zamboni not included. <laughs> I'm sorry, Leafs fans. That will never not be funny. Like, you guys could go on and win the Stanley Cup this year, and that wouldn't change the fact that you lost a Zamboni driver that works for you. <laughs> that will forever be probably one of my favorite hockey stories of all time. Like, that was such a great day. I'll take that trade. That's a good deal. Rangers receive Eichel and a seventh round pick. And the Sabres received the feeling that they're making a difference in the world. 
Well, it'd be a lot more than what they're doing right now. <laughs> to Boston, Jack Eichel, to Buffalo, the satisfaction he can play back home. Don't you want him to be happy? Also a seventh round pick. I noticed that a lot of you added in late round picks to go along with Jack Eichel in the Sabres trade just to annoy me. And uh, just so you know, I appreciate all of you. I got, I got a good laugh out of that. <laughs> Jack Eichel to the Kings for number two overall, Rasmus Kapari, Arthur Kaliev, and a top three protected first in 2021 or the mystery box. Highly recommend the mystery box. I'm really intrigued by that mystery box. You're gonna have to let me know what's in there. Not even in a fantasy world with the Flyers trade for Jack Eichel, but assuming we did, to Philly, Jack Eichel and a 2029 eighth rounder. Gotta throw in that late round pick to make it fair, of course. To Buffalo, Morgan Frost, Ghost, Kevin Hayes, Cam York, 2020 first and 2021 first. If I'm Buffalo, I don't accept that, but if I'm Philly, I don't offer that. Uh, there's really no trade here to be made where either team feels like they win that we would be within the realm of a reasonable offer. Yeah, so that's kind of the whole point, and thank you for saying that, because that's kind of the whole point that I'm trying to make with these videos, is that the cost for Jack Eichel would be so much just because of what he means to the city, you know, what he means to our team, he's our captain, he's the face of the Buffalo Sabres, he is Buffalo Sabres hockey. So it would cost so much to get him where I just don't feel like any team would be willing to give up what it would cost, um, whereas the Sabres just wouldn't be willing to trade Jack Eichel unless, you know, crazy things happen and he says, you know, I'm sitting out and not playing for the Sabres ever again. And he forces the Sabres hand. So yeah, I, I'm glad I'm glad you brought that up. I think no one would feel good from either side about a Jack Eichel trade, which is what would make it not work. To Vancouver, Jack Eichel and Rasmus Ristolainen. To Buffalo, Patterson, JT Miller, Chris Tanev, and a conditional first. So I, I like that idea. That's interesting to, to throw uh, Ristolainen in there. I, I like that. I like it. Um, I really like JT Miller. Um, I was really bummed when the Sabres didn't go after him when Tampa was trading him. I, I'm not sure that that's something the Sabres would do. I feel like they would want more more depth instead of just kind of like superstar for superstar. I don't know. Um, but I like, like, that's that's a good offer. Um, I love when I love when you guys add in, like, conditional picks and then don't tell me what the conditions are. It's like, come on! I gotta know! It's important! <laughs> Washington Capitals, we get Jack Eichel, of course. Sabres receive Nicholas Backstrom, who's a good playmaking center. Jacob Verana, Holtby, if the Capitals can retain his rights. Not quite the package the Sabres are looking for, I would imagine. I like the I like the explanation though, and <laughs> I like the comment on here too from Canadian Ninja. Needing to qualify or explain why your centerpiece of your return is worthy of being the centerpiece of the return is usually a bad sign. Shh, don't tell Mel. <laughs> That's pretty funny. To San Jose, Eichel and Henry Yokiharyu. To Buffalo, Brett Burns, Sorensen, Nosen, and a third round pick. Why you gotta throw Yoki Haru in there? Like, no, get out of here. Like, I love Henry Yoki Haru because he's a reminder that the Sabres don't lose every single trade they make. <laughs> I go to Boston for DeBrus, Carlo, John Beecher, David Krejci, Erho Vekanainen, and a first in 2021. Um, so I've been seeing a lot of trade offers kind of similar to that from Boston fans. I know there was an article, I think it was in the Boston Sports Journal or something, where, um, the writer had kind of offered something like that, like DeBras Carlo and then some prospects and then picks. And I don't hate it. Um, I, I, the thing is, like, I feel like if we're trading Jack Eichel within the division, like if we're trading Jack Eichel at all, it's crazy. If we're trading him within the division, where it's even a hundred times crazier. So if you want Jack Eichel at, in the Atlantic division, you're giving up way more than, than everybody else. So just like on face value, assuming it's not trading within the division, I don't, I don't dislike that idea. It, it kind of checks all my boxes, I would say, in terms of like, you know, the top six forward, second pairing defensemen, prospects, picks. Problem is I just, I don't think we would even consider the idea of trading him within the division. And just be patient, like once his contract's up, he's gonna go play for Boston anyway, so don't worry about it. To Toronto, Eichel Dulleen and a 2021st. To Buffalo, CC Marincin and Brocco. So you know how in my last video I said I wasn't interested in the opinions of Bruins fans? Uh, same goes for Leafs fans. You're on that list too now. <laughs> Abs will give you Tyson Joe's Bone Byram, Nikita Zadorov, and two firsts. We'll be picking late anyway for a while. Can you imagine if we traded Jack Eichel only to get like Nikita Zadorov back after trading away? That deal itself, I feel like, is a little too D heavy, um, if I'm being honest. Um, if we're trading Jack, I would want it to be more heavy on forwards. But um, yeah, you're getting you're getting the gist here, guys. <laughs> Ooh, I like this one. To Buffalo, a clone of Connor McDavid, Adam Larson, which is basically Taylor Hall, Nail Yakupov, and a time travel machine, so you can make him not a bust. 
Yiler Kamamoto, the lost twin of Kaiser Yams, <laughs> is that what people in Edmonton call him? Uh, 2143 and 2562 first round pick, and a 2027th rounder just to add a cherry on top. I appreciate that. Like, I just appreciate it for all of the effort you put in to all those things. I think that's, that, that's funny. Coming from a Sabres fan, to Tampa, Eichel, to Buffalo, Bogosian, two first, Tyler Johnson, and Sorelli. I would just love to see the apocalyptic reaction if, for whatever reason, Bogosian even came back to the Sabres at all, but in a Jack Eichel trade. Like, that would just be, ugh. The city would explode. The Sabres, Matthew Sandine, and two firsts. Ooh. To the Leafs, Jack Eichel, a 12 pack of cores, and a sixth. <laughs> the late round picks. I don't know. They're kind of asking a lot with that 12 pack, I would say. Maybe take off the sixth and you got a deal. Okay, fine. Grizzly Corrali and two firsts. <laughs> Thank you for adding in the two firsts this time. <laughs> Alex Nylander for Henry Yoki Haru. Forget Eichel, I just want Yoki back. No, you get stuck with Alex Nylander. In fact, give us Cahoon for Mata too. I want a refund on that trade. No! I like Cahoon and I like Yoki Haru. You just, sometimes you just gotta let Sabres fans have nice things. Um, we don't have many of them, just let us have what we have. <laughs> to Buffalo, Charlie McAvoy, Jake DeBrus, Tori Krug, Anders Bjork, uh, 2021 and 2022 first, obviously top 10 protected, obviously. To Boston, Jack Eichel, to me, free wings for life in Buffalo. I mean, that's a good deal for everyone involved, I would probably say. Um, but out of all three, I feel like you're kind of making out the best. I mean, free wings for life in Buffalo? That's that's a good deal for you. Buffalo trades Jack Eichel, Hurricanes trade Vincent Trocek, Brett Pesci, Dominic Bach. Uh, only one first round pick, but I will throw in a bunch of jerks t-shirts. Hmm. I would do that for the t-shirt. Those are cool t-shirts. I spent, what, the past, like... 14 years hating the Carolina Hurricanes for what they did to the Sabres in 2006. Um, but the bunch of jerks thing is hilarious. I love that. I love uh, your little celebrations at the end. And of course, I love the fact that y'all beat uh, the Leafs with a Zamboni driver goalie. I'd take the bunch of jerks t-shirt. Send that my way. That's a done deal. <laughs> Buffalo gets a first round draft pick. Aaron Eckblad, Eric Halla, and Owen Tippett. And Florida gets Jack Eichel. And a second round pick because you dislike second rounders. I do dislike second rounders. You know what? No, it's not even that I dislike second rounders. I just dislike all the second rounders that the Sabres take with those picks. And I especially dislike looking at all the players that the Sabres could have taken with those picks and didn't. <laughs> I propose a three-way trade. Uh-oh. Three-way trade to make my head hurt. To Anaheim, Jack Eichel, Louis Erickson, and Troy Stetcher. To Vancouver, Rasmus Ristolainen, and Sam Steele. To Buffalo, Hampus Lindholm, Brock Besser, Trevor Zegras, Niels Hoglander, and Anaheim's sixth overall pick. That, there's so much going on there. <laughs> I don't even know if I could break that down. That's great. Okay, here's the explanation. Anaheim gets, little, oh, I get it, like gets laugh, gets. <laughs> a generational player, but gives up essentially two high firsts, a solid 2-3 D-man, pretty good prospect in steel. Vancouver gets a boost on D, major cap relief, and a solid prospect in Sam Steele. Buffalo gets a slight upgrade on D, Top six sniper and two very high picks with Zegers and a sixth, and a very good prospect in Niels Hoglander. I appreciate the thought that went into that. That's a lot. Like, I feel like my brain is having trouble wrapping its head around like all of that. But I feel like if if that's what we get for Jack Eichel and I guess Rasmus Ristolainen, like if Hampus Lindholm would be an upgrade from Risto. So if that's just kind of like a one for one. We'd be getting Brock Besser, Zegris, Hoglander, and then the sixth overall pick. Like, it's a lot of thought. I, I really appreciate the thought that went into that. That's good. I think that the team that needs Eichel the most, given their current situation, is Arizona. My idea is Kessel, cap reasons. Not all that much value on him at this point, but he is a top six forward. Ranta, Buffalo finally gets a youngish starting goalie, replaces a prospect. Chikrin, Arizona's defense can take the hit. 22 year old top four defenseman. Hayton, top prospect and two second round picks. Not to be rude, but anyone who thinks Eichel is worth more than Kessel, Ranta, Chikrin, Hayton, and two seconds needs to get over themselves. Okay, so a couple talking points here. Number one, if you have to preface what you're gonna say with not to be rude, chances are you're probably being rude. <laughs> um, but number two, let's dive into this trade here. So Kessel would probably be the cat wash that you're talking about. Um, he's what, like almost 10 years older than Jack, so that would probably be an instant no for that. Um, Ranta. Again, a lot of people adding in goalies. Um, not saying we have a great goalie situation, but 
I think Linus Olmark is good enough to kind of take us to the playoffs if we had a better roster in front of him. Um, and then, of course, we have Uko Pekalukunen in the system who people are pretty high on. So I wouldn't really want a goalie, and I wouldn't want a goalie taking up that much value. So, again, that would be a no. Um, Chicker and Hayton, um, I mean, if that's kind of the two pieces that you're most excited about, you could probably do a lot better somewhere else around the league. Not saying that they're not good pieces, it's just wouldn't, wouldn't really excite Sabres fans too much. Um, and two seconds, no. I mean, you would definitely need firsts in there for sure. Like, <laughs> y'all know how I feel about second round picks. So that trade, I think, just looking at it, would be a pretty quick no. So I guess I'm just gonna have to go get over myself. <laughs> Eichel and the 2028th overall pick, uh-oh, to Winnipeg for the 2021st overall pick if the Jets win the lottery. Nikolai Ehlers, Jack Roslevic, Top prospect Billy Hainola and top prospect Michael Bergen. If the Jets don't win the lottery, Eichel to the Jets for 2021st round selection, likely between 12 and 16, um, and a 2021 first round pick and all the other pre players previously included. I love the two different scenarios. Like, if we win the lottery, you get this. If we don't, you get this. <laughs> I like this scenario a lot better if it inc includes Lafreniere. But again, that's a lot of that's a lot of thought put into it. I like it. Jack Eichel in a 7th in 2021 <laughs> for Brandon Saad, Dylan Strom, Slater Cuckoo, Adam Boquist, 2021-2022 first round pick. Might be able to take Malcolm Subban if you want, but we have yet to see him actually play in Chicago. That's a lot of things. I don't know, Chicago, you're going to have to tell me what's going on with Dylan Strom. Um, I haven't really paid too, too close attention to him, but I am interested, so let me know how uh, what you think of Dylan Strom. I think about him a lot considering, you know, he was the pick after Eichel and McDavid. So I always wonder kind of how he's doing. Habs get Eichel and Cahoon. Sabres get Gallagher, Petrie, Caulfield, or Paling. First and a second. Lottery protected, of course. I don't think those first round picks are traded without that clause anymore. Uh, now that's gotta be close to entertaining for ya. Get Cahoon out of there. <laughs> I don't wanna give up Cahoon. In terms of the other stuff, like I feel like it couldn't, in that trade, it probably couldn't be Caulfield or Paling, it'd probably have to be Caulfield and Paling. Again, the same concept with like trading within the division, you definitely have to overpay. But I do like Cole Caulfield, he was the guy that uh, I wanted the Sabres to take in 2019, but I'm happy we got Cousins. Buffalo receives Pasta and Krug, Boston receives Dullian and Eichel. See, this, these are the kinds of trades I'm talking about, like, hit me with these blockbusters, don't be sending me your, like, B-level prospects and like your aging players that you don't want. Hit me with these like blockbusters that are fun to think about. Like, I love stuff like that. <laughs> Still no, don't touch Dolly. Hurricanes receive Eichel, Buffalo receives Natchez, some barbecue, and Jake Bean. It's amazing, I'm so glad you guys learned how easy it is to buy me with food. Um, especially barbecue, like, that's easily a done deal. <laughs> hmm, I'd prefer to see Buffalo succeed with Eichel. Thank you. However, I guess the fairest deal for the Wild could be Minnesota, Kirill Kaprasov, uh, Minnesota's first, potential Lafreniere right there. Your pick of either Brodeen or Dumba. Mr. September's Joel Eriksson um, for Eichel and a fifth. Who doesn't love late rounders? You all are killing me. So Melody, deal or no deal? Um, no deal with that stupid fifth round pick on the end. In all seriousness, I would I would actually really like to see Lafreniere go to Minnesota. I think they could uh, they could use a superstar like that. I'm rooting for that. Max Domi, elite second center. Victor Mete, second pairing puck moving D-man. Cole Caulfield, Yasperi Kakaniemi, 2021st if it doesn't land first overall. 2021st, no Juleson as a sweetener. Yeah, I mean, that that checks all the boxes. Um, I'm interested to see how many Habs fans would actually be okay with giving that up, you know? To the Blues, Jack Eichel. To the Sabres, Jaden Swartz, Jordan Cairo, first round pick in 2021, and unlimited Budweiser. I don't know what Buffalonian wouldn't take that all day long. Is it like, like who gets the unlimited bud though? Like, like is it the Sabres GM who gets the unlimited bud? Or is it like all of Buffalo gets just free beer for life for giving up Jack Eichel? Because if that's the case, I think that's a pretty easy yes for the people of Buffalo. Eichel for Capo Caco, Truba, Strom, Georgiev, Keandre Miller, uh, the two first round picks for this year's draft. That's actually pretty good. But again, it's the same thing, like Rangers fans are probably looking at that and being like, oh my god, absolutely not, you're out of your mind. Um, to all you Leafs fans offering William Melander, like, go away. Like, we're not ever trading Jack Eichel to you. 
<laughs> like I'm getting so many of these these trade offers like William Nylander plus like no we already had one Nylander and we didn't want him <laughs> plus what is Jack Eichel gonna be like your third line center like no shush okay Melody here it goes Buffalo receives Travis Konechny Travis Sanheim Morgan Frost Cam York two first and a second for Jack Eichel Rasmus Ristolainen and a third yeah I mean I don't I don't dislike that. I like Travis Connect Me a lot. I've been getting a lot of interesting offers from Flyers fans. I'm not I'm not really sure how that would work salary wise with Eichel at ten and Risto over five. Like that's a lot of salary going going to Philly. But I mean again, that's uh you're checking my boxes and I appreciate it. I honestly couldn't imagine a return for Eichel being fair for both teams. No matter how good the offer is, is it worth Jack Eichel? How much of your team would you give up to acquire him? Exactly. <laughs> Like, when you're dealing with players of that caliber, um, it just, I, I just don't see how it makes sense, you know? Buffalo and Arizona, um, Eichel in a third for Clayton Keller, Jacob Chikorin, Lawson Krause, Michael Chaput, first and a fifth. Let me know what you think. I don't hate it, like, I feel like any trade with Arizona would probably start with Clayton Keller. Jacob Chikorin, yeah, I mean, I don't know, like, any, I feel like there's so many of these offers that I just, like, on the surface are probably good but I just, I wouldn't feel necessarily comfortable or excited about, um, and that's again the whole point, but you just gotta get rid of those, those late round picks, they drive me nuts. <laughs> to Buffalo, Little Harnkins, five fans, let's be honest, the Sabres need them. Okay, hmm, we're gonna stop right there. There have been so many people, and I don't know if this is what you mean in your comment, but there have been so many people that um, are new to my channel, are new to, you know, Buffalo Sabres talk, and are like, wow, Buffalo has fans? I didn't even know that. Or like comments like that, like, that's not even funny. Like, like I have no problem with Buffalo Sabre smack talk, that's fine. But like to say that we don't have fans is crazy. Like every single year during the playoffs, Buffalo is always ranked like number one in TV ratings and we're never even in them. Like we're ranked higher than the teams actually playing. So to say that we don't have fans is, get out of here with that, triggered. <laughs> Anyways. So, uh, five fans, uh, future considerations, maybe a pack of bubble gum or something. To Winnipeg, Jack Eichel and Michael Froelich. We would really just want Froelich, but Eichel would be good too. <laughs> you can definitely have Froelich. I know his contract's up at the end of this year, but like, take him before that. He's all yours. <laughs> Ooh, a deadline deal. Uh, Vancouver trades a 2021 first, 2022 first, 2021 second, 2022 second. I hate all these like 2020, 2020. Niels Hoglander, Tyler Toffoli, Adam Gaudet, and Jacob Markstrom. Buffalo trades Eichel and Carter Hutton and Kyle Oposo. Interesting. Um, Buffalo saves $3.25 in cap hit. They get rid of Oposo. The net savings of $3 million make up for the salary retention. Buffalo gets a big upgrade at, uh, on goalie. Markstrom is top 10 in the league. Buffalo gets the 30-plus scorer into Foley. A young 40-plus point center in Gaudette. A solid wing prospect in Hoglander. Two unprotected firsts. Second round picks uh, of a bubble team like Vancouver. I would say this is a solid trade. I actually, this is a very interesting trade. Very interesting to to add in Kyle Oposo to that because then from that perspective, if you're giving up Kyle Oposo, you probably don't have to give up as much from Vancouver's side. We're saving money and we're getting some decent return. I like that. Um, I think that would be too like crazy of a trade to pull the trigger on. Um, and I don't, I don't think. Uh, Vancouver would really be crazy about losing their starting goalie and having to take on Kyle Poso. It's interesting to think about. I like I like these trades that make me think here. To Dallas, Jack Eichel in a 2021 second. To Buffalo, Tyler Sagan, Mero Heiskanen, Jason Robertson, a 2021 first, a 2021 second, 2021 third, and a 2022 second, which becomes a first if Dallas wins the cup in 21 or 22. Wow! Sagan's interesting because obviously he's a lot older than Jack, but I would love Miro and Rasmus Dahlin as our one-two punch. Like, that would be so sick. But that's, yeah, that's a lot. If I did that trade, I might even consider, like, taking Tyler Sagan and then trading him for something else. That's probably an overpayment on the part of Dallas there. How about a three-way trade? How about it? Uh, Vancouver receives Jack Eichel, LA Kings receive Elias Pettersson, Buffalo receives Drew Doughty and a second round pick and an eighth round pick. I was really excited. I was like, okay, Jack Eichel, Patterson. Oh. <laughs> okay, this is mine from the Flames. Goudreau, Mejiapani, I love that name. Shillington, Velimaki, Patterson, young prospect. First in 2021 and in 2022. What do you think? 
I like that. Um, Johnny Gaudreau always like puzzles me on how I feel about him. Like his name is always seemingly in in trade rumors, and I guess Flames fans are gonna kind of have to explain to me why. I feel like though, like I would much rather see Jack Eichel with Johnny Gaudreau instead of them being traded for each other because that would be really sick. But yeah, interesting. To the Islanders, Jack Eichel. To the Sabers, two first rounders and Matt Barzell. I like Matt Barzell a lot. My concern is putting faith in the Sabres scouting department that they, they could actually turn those first round picks into decent players. <laughs> Islanders fan, I'll give you Casey Sezegis, Matt Martin, Kale Clutterbuck, Leo Komarov, Tom Kuneckel, Andrew Ladd, and Derek Broussard. That's seven bottom six forwards that can thrive on the PK. What's not to love? Okay, fine, you can have a six round pick too. I hate it when my own song lyrics are used against me. <laughs> Edmonton gives up Ryan Nugent Hopkins, Darnell Nurse, Evan Bouchard, and two first round picks. One with a first overall protection and one with no protection for Jack Eichel. So it's not terrible. Um, I, I'm, I feel like Ryan Nugent Hopkins might be a little far out of the age range that the Sabres would be looking for in terms of like what the main forward they get back is. I feel like they'd want to kind of be a little bit younger. And then to get back a couple defensemen, I don't know if, like that would definitely help, but I don't know if that's kind of what they'd be after. But I would veto this trade specifically on the fact that I would not want to see Connor McDavid and Jack Eichel and Leon Draisaitl on the same team. Like, why don't you just give them the next 10 Stanley Cups? Blockbuster! Buffalo to Edmonton. Eichel, Reinhardt, Darlene, and Ristolainen. Uh, Edmonton to Buffalo. McDavid, Draisaitl, Ryan Nugent Hopkins, and Clefbaum. I love these blockbusters! Like, that, that should be my next video. You guys should send me in your best blockbuster trades and let me react to them because I love a good blockbuster. Eichel McDavid. So obviously McDavid's better than Eichel. Dreisaitl, Reinhardt, obviously Dreisaitl's better than Reinhardt. And then you got Dahlin, who you'd probably put over Nuge and Clefbaum. And then Risto, who you put below all of them. <laughs> That's fun. That's interesting. I love that. Senators receive Eichel. Buffalo see receives Duclair. I love Anthony Duclair. Like, I want, I want him on the Sabres. I want him to reunite with Sam Reinhardt like they did on the World Junior team. You like Rasmus Ristolainen? <laughs> to Philly, Jack Eichel, he won't wear number nine. Uh, to Buffalo, Joel Faraby, Philip Myers, Morgan Frost, and two first. So the trade looks good on the surface, however, I feel like Jack Eichel would veto it just because he wouldn't be able to wear number nine. Because he loves the number nine so much, he just had to change his number. Even after I had like four Jack Eichel number 15 jerseys. <laughs> From a Habs fan following your hint. From Montreal, Druin, top six forward around the same age. Sherrod, I mean, he's the best D we got under 30. Cole Caulfield, best prospect. Romanov, second best prospect. Two first round picks. Would you trade Eichel for that? If not, is there a way that Montreal could get Eichel with their current roster? So, I I don't know if Montreal really has enough. Again, it, it goes back to the same concept of like the Atlantic division. So I, I just don't think that it would make sense for Buffalo to trade with Montreal for Jack Eichel. I like that you kind of like followed my format for the trade. I just think there's no way that we could trade within the division, um, so I don't think it, it would ever happen with Montreal. And, and again, too, I'm wondering how willing Montreal fans would be willing to give up something like that, you know what I mean? New York Rangers trade Mika Zibanejev, Kandre Miller, D'Angelo in a first, Buffalo trades Eichel in a third. And DC NYR says, hell no, you're tripping. Mika is better all around than Eichel. I've actually seen a lot of that, like, I've seen Rangers fans say that they wouldn't even trade Mika Zibanejad straight up for Eichel. Comment below, Rangers fans. Let me know. Would you be willing to trade Mika Zibanejad for Jack Eichel? Or do you think that Mika is better than Jack? I'm interested. I want I want some honest opinions. Okay, I know you said Bruins fans aren't allowed to have an opinion in your last video, but just for fun. Jake DeBrus, Jack Stamika, Earl Vekaninen, and two first round picks. I feel like Buffalo would probably want someone like McAvoy instead of a D prospect. Don't even consider it. But hey, gotta try <laughs> Gotta at least try to lowball, right? Yeah, of course. I mean, how do you think the... The Blues got O'Reilly. <laughs> yeah, again, it's the same thing. Like uh, uh, most of the Bruins fans' offers are pretty much the same, give or take a few a few pieces. Um, if I'm the Sabers, I would probably want McAvoy for sure. But again, just wait until his contract's up. Lise Pedersen for Eichel and the Curse of the Sabers. Absolutely sold. Um, if you're taking the the 50 years of just bad luck and negativity and awfulness from us, and you're giving us Elias Pettersson, done deal, man. <laughs> Alright, Minnesota here. We'll give you our hot new prospect to fill your void at center, Eric Stahl. 
<laughs> we'll even throw in Pittsburgh first. We got the Zucker deal. In fact, I'll pull some strings so you can have Zucker too. I'll send over the paperwork this week. <laughs> I love it. I love. See, this is the thing. I love the sense of humor. Like, because obviously Jack Eichel's not getting traded. And I, but I've had so many people like get really mad at me for like let's say laughing at at certain things or you know try to ha just try to have fun with things, right? Um, so. I, I, I really appreciate everyone who sent in the funny trades. Bonus non-Jack Eichel trade. Okay, that's fun. It's not a Jack trade, but I'm from Calgary and I heard rumors that Buffalo might be kicking tires with Calgary after the playoffs. This is only if Calgary shits the bed, but there are talks that Buffalo wants Johnny Hockey for Sam Reinhardt and Rista Linen. Ooh, that's interesting. I probably wouldn't be super excited about giving up Sam Reinhardt. And, and again, like I, like I said, the, the Johnny Goudreau thing is... Like, I just can't decide how I feel about him. Interesting, though. Um, I probably wouldn't do it with Sam Reinhardt. Obviously, Ristolainen doesn't have a ton of trade value at the moment. Um, so I feel like that's a fair trade. Reinhardt and Risto for, for Johnny Hockey. But I'm not super sure it's one that I would make. But I like I like the fun trades. I like the, I like the fun ideas. Well, thank you for watching this video. Uh, don't ever make me do this again. It makes me sad. I do really like... Uh, having some interesting thoughts and discussions about about this stuff. So if you guys have more things you want me to react to that's not Jack Eichel trades, <laughs> like maybe trades for different teams where I could kind of provide maybe a non-biased outside perspective, I mean, that would be interesting. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think. And uh, yeah, I will see you soon. Thanks for watching.